Shahzad, can you tell us what is, what are the challenges that women are facing under Taliban rule? Um, how serious is the situation? Are there any ways of, of ensuring that whatever rights are left aren't going to fall by the wayside? Shahzad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very honored to be putting this to you and to my honorable co-panelists. I'm very pleased to share this platform with Dr. Samar and Ms. Raj and other panelists whom I think are yet to join. Um, well, the, the human rights situation and the humanitarian situation, as you know, in Afghanistan currently is dire. Um, the access to socioeconomic um, rights has been severely limited. Um, country is facing um, widespread, widespread starvation and hunger, um, unprecedented levels in the past 20 years, unfortunately, which is an indication of the fact that many of the efforts that were made in the past were also uh, um, less than sustainable, but also the fact that Taliban have not really shifted from an insurgency group to a group that's willing to govern and um, willing to face the difficult uh, questions that a government requires to face and create some internal consensus on some basics of governance around inclusivity and respect for citizens' rights. And of course, political um, and human rights considerations has limited the international community's uh, capacity um, to deliver development aid to Afghanistan at this moment. But even delivery of humanitarian aid has been slower than expected and then what it should really be. Um, unfortunately, it does seem like the plight of Afghans is not um, creating the sense of urgency that it should among the international community as well. And uh, delivering humanitarian aid or pledging to, um, to meet the, the required um, um, needs of, for humanitarian assistance, as well as exploring mechanisms creative mechanisms to solve the liquidity crisis Afghanistan is facing. The human rights situation is dire. Um, there is one of the most prominent, unfortunately, threats. Um, um, trends as feared is retribution and revenge killings, targeted killings, extrajudicial killings. Um, we are not sure if this is Taliban policy um, or if it's happening and their fighters are involved, but there seems to be impunity for the fighters who are involved or for groups who are um, involved in targeted killings of former national security forces, including women, prosecutors, um, civil society activists and journalists. So unfortunately, we have a very ugly and scary pattern of targeted killings, particularly high in some parts of Afghanistan, but has subsequently led to fear across the country and has contributed to the complete closure of public space. The situation for women, um, all women across Afghanistan universally have less rights than they did before. Just a few months ago, um, there are restrictions imposed on women's movement. Um, you're all well aware on restrictions on women's education, girls' education, which is something that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world, including in any other Islamic country. Um, and it has been really heartbreaking to watch, to see millions of Afghan girls um, having to uh, having to really bury their dreams and ambitions for now for, for education and progress. Um, and for women's employment of female government employees in many institutions have been told to stay at home. And the situation is very uncertain for women working in other sectors, non-government sectors as well. This in a country which there are many female-led households. And um, so it's having an economic impact as well, obviously. Um, the legal situation is very unclear. There is a legal limbo in terms of what constitutional framework and what laws Afghanistan is upholding right now. Um, Afghanistan, as you know, is treated to many international conventions, including CEDAW, um, and, um, for instance, Convention Against Torture, Child Rights Convention. So Afghanistan's international commitments are not being upheld. And I think this is a space where we need to explore along with international allies and feminist organizations, how can we use Afghanistan's international commitments, possibly as leverage to negotiate for rights and space inside Afghanistan. I don't want to take too much time. I just want to end that while external pressure is important, 
It's particularly important that this pressure is coming from Islamic countries on Taliban, particularly around women's rights. That goes much further and has deeper impact. Um, so both pressure and engagement from Islamic countries around women's rights is very, very important. Um, and um, it's something that we have been pushing for and asking for. And of course, Pakistan can play a very, very significant role in this. As well as, of course, we should not forget the importance of internal domestic pressure. Uh, women, Afghan women have been protesting despite the very difficult situation on the ground. Um, their courage humbles me every day. Um, but we have to make sure that people have the protections that they need, but also that we are all the external pressure is really being utilized to create the legal framework or clarify the legal framework to the extent that civil society, media, and women's rights groups can operate without harm inside the country. Because I think that's what will determine the kind of future course on human rights and women's rights for Afghans. Um, I'll stop there and happy to take questions later. Thank, thank you so very much. That, that's extremely useful. Thank you.